What if I told you one of the most crucial things in Transport Fever 2 for management is actually ignored by most players? Shocker, I know. Now I've been getting such a high demand of requests specifically for this video, so hopefully I can help some of you guys out today by explaining sorting hubs and also taking a look into train hierarchy specifically in the early game. And why this is probably the most important thing in Transport Fever 2 is that it makes your cities grow quicker and it makes your trains get places quicker, which is literally the point of this game is to make the best transport empire, so you want to do this in your save. And that's why you need to watch the end of the video to find out all of the best tips of doing this. So what exactly are sorting hubs? Well, it's basically a hub that goes near your capital city, but not inside the capital city, as all of the resources from around the map scooped up and brought to one location where they can then be distributed. Now, if you just started your game, this might be a bit expensive just to start off, and that's why you should use these road depots. But I'm in the 1900s, just gone, and now I can afford trains. I want to bring this stuff by train, it's much quicker. But I didn't delete my road terminal, as I can now use this again, but instead of deliveries, I can do outbound traffic, so these guys pick up the goods, anything pretty much that gets delivered here there's loads of different objects and then they get taken down the road drops off in this distribution hub here and then these guys take it throughout the city to various different drop off points that have the best coverage that's one key thing in this game never ever ever put all your distribution in one place you don't want to get one of these guys and just chuck it down in the middle of town and call it a day no what you need to do instead is you need to have lots of drop off points around the town just like this here all around the place because if you click on here, you'll notice that not the whole city is covered. In fact, the cargo is going to get delivered to the places closest to the drop-off point, and then if it has extras, keep going further and further out. But it does get to a point where there's no longer the coverage of this stop, and that's why you need multiple. So the big things to remember, you need a big sorting yard close to your capital city, and preferably close to the center of the map, and then that stuff can get dropped off at a road distribution hub, which can then be sent off throughout the cities. Now it's a lot to take in, I'm sure, if you've never seen this before. And that's why we're going to introduce some examples with some new types of industries here. So in your saves, you're probably going to have random industries just around the place, placed wherever. My map's a little bit different because I like to play it slightly different with the rules. So in my saves, certain different spots of the map are where you can put resources. For example, over here, this is an oil patch, so you could put an oil pump here. And over here, we've got a bit of lumber coming from this forest. And over here, again, in these mountains, we've got a mine getting the stone for us. They've got to be in certain geographic locations. And I can place this because I have this sandbox mode enabled in the settings. And I would recommend you guys turn this on if you want for a more fulfilling gameplay. Because things won't be placed randomly. We've pretty much already got Berlin ready to go. That's what I made earlier, but let's try another city and walk you through the process. Okay, for starters, this train here is bringing stone in from all the way over here in this mine that we just talked about. It's picking it up at this spot, taking it down to the distribution hub. And as it happens, we actually built one of these construction materials plants right next to the distribution hub. And that means we can make bricks as soon as the stone is delivered. What we can do is we can increase the amount of stone that's delivered. In turn, we'll increase the amount of bricks that's delivered. Probably upgrade this factory as well. And that means that we'll have an abundance of bricks, probably too many for Berlin. And then we can send them off on trains down the line. That is the premise of distribution hubs and how they work. You have mixed cargo trains, which are some of the most OP things in Transport Fever 2, hands down, that go to all of the cities dropping off, starting at the capital. So I think the first thing's first, we go around all of the raw resource industries, like the stone, and we increase the amount of production. I don't think this can go any higher, just because it's actually at its limit. So that means in this instance, we're going to need another mine. That's another mine in, we can now hook this up with a line, and nice and simply, this can be picked up by the train in the same spot. And we can very quickly talk naming conventions as well. A lot of people call it like Krakow or Berlin stone to brick, don't do that. Just call it simply stone to brick, and then a number. So this is our second one. And the reason literally is that it's just there's no need to put city names in there when all the cities share. It just makes sense. And now these guys are on the way. We can do the same thing for all of the raw resources. So now you've got those raw resources hooked up. You can now choose if you want to bring them to the distribution hub, which I would recommend. Or you can take them to a nearby factory if it's relevant. So for example, if there's a forest here, there might be a sawmill place down the road here. In that case, you could link these two up and then deliver the more refined product to the distribution hub. I always prefer at least a couple of vehicles taking some from here to the distribution hub as well, just so you've got the option. Now this only works for local locations, see this isn't too far away from where I want the distribution hub to be. But if I have something say like all the way over here, what we need to do is we need to insert north, south, east and west yards if it's a square map or if it's a long map, north and south. Let me explain. So for example, this is north, the UK and France. I would have my north yard in the centre here and that would gather all of these resources in the local area to this yard and then all at once would be distributed down to the distribution hub. Same thing can be said for the south. All of these resources gathered up and then scooped up and taken to the distribution hub in the middle. If you've got a square map, then you also probably want to have east and west as well. 
Mine's kind of square, but it's more rectangular. So I would probably go for a west one, but not an east one, just because my central one is like as far east as you can go. But for west, I might have one down here in Italy. That could be an option. There's just not a lot of resources to scoop up though. So it's really depending on your map. But I'd recommend 100% north and south. So right now, this station here is currently acting as our south sourcing yard. Now it's not in the right place at all. It's way too close to the distribution hub and it's not far south enough to really cover the south. You would kind of need it around here somewhere. So what I'll do is I'll leave that in there just because it's doing its job for now. We can always change it later. And I'll build a sorting yard down south just to show you what you need to do. I actually don't own a lot of land down here. I will eventually, obviously, but I do own Cluj. And for that reason, I'm going to place it down in Cluj. Not a whole lot of resources and it's only the early game. So I'm going to go for four tracks. If you're in the late game, I recommend starting off with six. Uh, I would say never go up to eight. You can always add on later with the tool, but I recommend four. It's just a good number for the early game. You want to find a nice flat piece of land, preferably not too close to a city. So this is actually going to be a terminus for the time being because it's a very modern map. We don't actually own this land. We can't build anything in here just yet, but that's fine because we can always expand later. Beauty of transport fever too. We can now start to bring more of our resources to this sorting yard to then be shipped off by one big train over to the distribution hub. So it doesn't actually matter where your raw resources go, so long as they're in the proximity of a yard. It doesn't matter which one though. So this distribution hub, imagine there's a big circle that goes around the hub, and that's the amount of catchment range this hub has. And outside of that, you want to go to these extremity yards. So this new yard's going to be a really good spot in the future, once we've taken over all of these places and we can use their land and their resources we can bring them all in this area to this self-sorting yard and then we can send all of them out down the line to the distribution hub. So wood, stone, copper, all that is pretty easy stuff because it's all raw resources. However, steel is a key resource that isn't raw. You have to cook it and for that you need steel works. This one already at full capacity. So what if we go down the line a little bit here? There's another steel works in Cluj which we can use as well. And because we made it really easy for ourselves, all we need to do is create a new line that's going to start out in the distribution hub, it's going to go down the line and we're literally just going to click on the self sorting yard and that's going to bring anything at all, any object that wants to go down the line towards the self sorting yard is going to automatically be loaded onto the train delivered. There's no, oh this train's a stone train, this train's, no, it's every resource all at once, it's so simple. That one's going to be distribution to self yard and of course you do the same thing for the north yard, give it a nice pink colour, why not? I will set this alternate platform to all of these, but I doubt it's going to use it. It's just a good option to have. And then this needs to be dropped off, of course. We hook it up with a station, and then that goes to the road. Same thing over here. Get a few road vehicles on that route. Those guys are off. I bet you're wondering, okay, so the iron and the coal is automatically coming by train. That makes sense. What, does, what happens with the steel then? It's literally, the steel gets picked up, taken to here, and then the exact same train that drops the iron and the coal off, then picks it up and takes it back to the distribution hub, and that can go wherever else. I hope it's starting to make sense for you now. Let's go to our depot. Looks like we've already got a train or two in storage, which is nice. Now these trains here are shunting trains, so probably not the best idea to use these cross country, which is kind of what we're doing here with the freight, because it's going from the yard extremity to the central yard. Probably gonna want a stronger train for that, which is fine. We can buy a new one. Let's get a new train. Now this route is not an essential one, so it doesn't need to be an amazing train, just a good one. Let's see if there's any essential train routes that have more outdated trains on them we can replace. Aha! Now this one, the PLM, we can upgrade this, so if we send this guy back to the depot, we can stick a better train on this copper delivery train, and this lower train could go to the self sorting yard. At least for now, that's a really good setup. And that's our PLM there in storage. That goes 60 miles an hour, so let's see our train wagons and see what we should get. Now remember, we want to carry steel, coal, and iron. So just bear that in mind when you're buying your train cars. In the end game, these two trains is going to connect both South and North Yard to the distribution hub. These guys are going to carry all types of cargo, so just bear that in mind. But for now, we don't need that because we're only doing these three types, but I'll upgrade it eventually. Okay, so I just want the PLM, please. Uh, you're going 50, you're going 80. So it's probably not worth spending the one that goes 80 when our train only goes 60. It's a bit of a waste of money. I'd rather just take the hit of 10 miles an hour, but have the power of the PLM, which is fine because we get good acceleration. As it happens, we already have some of these, which is great. I think if we go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those, I think is pretty good. And then for the steel return, I think it's two to one, so we're probably going to need four of these. So one, two, three, four. And I think that is pretty good. We'll modify that, and we can then stick the new train onto our new line. 
Perfect, and now I think it's time that we explain the distribution process. All these goods are now going to the hubs, but what do we do with them after that? Quite simple. So starting at the capital, always start at the capital. You're going to deliver all of the resources that come to the distribution hub via these road vehicles to the capital city, like mentioned earlier in the video. But you'll also want to get some trains to take it to the next city along the line, which in our case is going to be the next biggest city, Harris, which we've yet to build. And that brings us on to a little bit of train hierarchy because this line is really not suitable for what we want to do. In train hierarchy, there's three types of passenger trains and there's two types of cargo trains. In this specific example, there's only two types of passenger trains and one type of cargo train because it's the early game. So with passenger, we've got our cross country and we've got our commuter services. There's no intercity just yet. That comes later in the game. For the cargo, we've got our cargo intermediate routes that go hub to hub. So the general rule of thumb is you don't want the cargo trains to run on the main lines, the cross country tracks because it slows down the other trains, and that's not good because it loses you money. A good opportunity in this situation is to connect Hanover with Cologne, and then Cologne to Paris via commuter tracks, and then the freight train could use these commuter tracks and then switch off over in Paris to a different spot. And it's much more efficient because these slower tracks mean that the faster trains can go faster down their own dedicated tracks, which this section of the map is desperate in need for. Let's do it right now. There's a commuter service already going to Hanover, perfect. We can now bulldoze some random people's houses. Sorry mates, your house is now gone. So simply now connect these tracks with the next city. Passenger station goes down in the commercial sector of Cologne. Those tracks are now connected up between those stations. But where's the track gonna go? That's the question. Well, it's gonna link up back to the main line just before it gets to Paris. So it's not gonna be on those cross country tracks too long in particular. There's no tracks there right now though. Let's fix that. We'll get a station. Put it down in commercial. We'll get a slightly bigger one than normal just because of the size. We're going to treat Paris as a terminal as well just because we can't really go much further because it's occupied land but eventually it's good to have the option and that's why we've left it like this. Now this next bit's a little bit trickier. We've got to have to pause the game and we're going to have to just delete a load of track here to get these nice straight lines that are going to go for these cross-country tracks. So just back this all the way up. So this is what it currently looks like. There used to be a fork there. That's going to change. Let's delete this old battleground drop-off point. It's not being used anymore. Perhaps we can reuse this line. That makes sense. To back it up a little bit to get it nice and straight. But aside from that, might be pretty good if we can just hook this straight into here, possibly. How are we looking? A little bit pricey. Can we drop this down slightly? We can. That puts a tunnel in. It's okay. That keeps the track nice and flat, so I'm for that. Let's do that. We'll just have to very slightly back this up some more. That's looking good as a nice straight line towards Paris. Passing by this old battleground, the Battle of Paris. Very nice, and we'll just slide in a little X at the end here as well, so the trains can cross over in and out of the station. That's now connected up, and then we've got to reconnect our smaller little line here going to Strasbourg, and also our commuter route has got to connect up to this track as well. Okay, that commuter train is now actually hooked up. We've got to do the line. We'll grab this one here. So Berlin to Paris, commuter. Add a stop in Cologne, add a stop in Paris, and then back to Cologne and then back to Hanover, and then of course back to Berlin automatically. And that route's probably gonna need some more trains on there than just the one, but that's lucky because we already have the commuter type trains in storage from earlier. We've got two of these guys, and it looks like some carriages as well. Let's see how many carriages this train has first of all before we add another one. Okay, this is a pretty big train. We probably wanna cut this down to give this thing more acceleration because we're on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, not great. So what we'll do is we'll put this back in storage and then we can have a look. Okay, so these are the trains we've got to work with. Three, Prouse, and quite a few train cars. So let's drop this down slightly. I don't think we need the Roussel bolt on there, on either of these actually. But we can put the Bavarians on this bottom one and that's pretty equal. If we add just one of these to the end of here, then these two trains are the exact same. That might be pretty good if we go for that. Yeah, let's do that and we'll keep these two Roussel bolts in storage. We can always use them later if we need to. Very nice, these two trains can now go onto the commuter service. Now they're going to take a while to come out. In the meantime, we've yet to do our cross-country service, which will instate right now. Very easy to do because we've got a massive train line just like that that's going all the way down there to Paris non-stop. Super simple, new line. That's going to be Berlin to Paris cross-country. Let's have a look at Berlin here. It's getting pretty hectic. Is there a better spot to put this train? Probably that platform with an alternate on two. Yeah, this place is absolutely crowded. The amount of trains running through here is crazy. So that's Berlin to Paris cross-country. Give it a nice yellow color. And now we need to buy a cross country train. So a new train is in order. The Russo Bolt goes 60, which is okay, but can we do better than that? Let's have a look what else we've got. You go 80, 80, 110. 
That might be a good shout, that 110. You got 120. You don't hold very many. I think it's either going to be 110 or 100. So let's see what the Steam Trains have in offer. 100, 100. It's all looking like 100, yeah. So we'll get the A3 slash 5. Lovely looking train. In fact, we'll give it a nice black color because that's going to look very nice. Lovely black. And, and then we'll grab some carriages as well. These are our first carriages, our first luxury carriages right here. Now I say we're going to get one, two, three of those. I think it's probably like... No, we'll go for two. We'll go for two for now. Keep it nice and simple. And we can always add more later. That's going to go on the cross-country service. Of course, not forgetting to add them to our storage in our yard. This is all just visual, but it looks very nice. Let's be honest. Last thing is to connect back up Strasbourg. I'm sorry you've been cut off from the world. My apologies. You're back. And then all of these are just the war ones from the battles. We don't even use these anymore, so we can get rid of all of these routes. And here it is, our brand new cross-country train. And look at it, what a beauty. Absolutely magnificent. And now finally, we can move on to the very thing we set out to do originally, which is to link the distribution hub with another city, and that's going to be Paris. We've got all the infrastructure in place now. These tracks are where they need to be. Aside from Strasbourg, which could do with a little bit better because obviously commuter trains are slightly running just for that little section on the main line. Could be better, but it's fine, it works. And for that reason, we're going to go ahead now with the cargo train. It's a very simple process. Once again, this is going to go up to our north yard, which we have yet to build. I think Paris should definitely have our north yard in mind. We'll get a brand new yard over here. I think we'll stick it down a nice flat area near Paris, but not in Paris. Now that is pretty central up to the north of the map, so there's lots of coverage there. We're now going to need to connect this up to the road network. And because the trains that go between yards are classed as cross-country trains, even though they do go slightly slower, they are classed as cross-country. And for that reason, they can fit on the cross-country tracks. So we'll slide them on there. But they're not designed to run on the tracks all the time. That's not their purpose. They're only sharing tracks here and there on cross-country and commuter trains. And for that reason, as soon as they get onto this main line here, pretty much immediately, they're going straight off the tracks and they're going back onto this commuter line over here, which just keeps the line nice and free. So that's pretty good. This pickup point needs to deliver, and I just keep it nice and simple by placing a rose distribution hub down in the commercial area of the town. And you probably want to get the maximum amount of platforms that you can actually fit in here. So just go for whatever you think is comfortable. Slide it in. It doesn't have to be in the center of town, just near enough. Remember, this is not giving the town resources, it's just sharing the resources with the town that are then going to be shipped out to the different houses within. A new road line to pick up and drop off at that spot. And already, let's stick some vehicles that we have in storage on there. You want to get the vehicles that carry all resources as well, because they're going to be carrying mixed goods, so they're going to carry all sorts down into the city. And here's the big one, a train. Okay, the train is going to drop off in Paris, but first of all, it needs to go to the distribution hub and get the stuff in the first place. For that reason, we're going to get a new line that's going to go there to Paris. Alternate platforms for that as well. And probably Berlin, give it some alternate platforms as well if we can do. Just the one, platform five. That's okay. And this is going to be dist to North Yard. And now what mighty train is going to fit on this track? It's going to have to be a train with every single type of cargo carrier. This is going to lose us money in the short term, but gain us a lot of money in the long term. And I say we invest. We might have conquered the new capital city, but our infrastructure is lacking. That's why we need some good trains. I don't think we quite need that big of an investment at 600k a year. Same speed, only a drop in acceleration. So for like half the price, yeah, we'll go for one of these guys. KPEV. And the KPEV goes 100 miles an hour. So we need something that goes the closest to that we can get. Perhaps actually if we get a slower train, because these only go 80 top speed, might be better. If you go 100 and you go 90, I don't think anything here goes 80. Not that much less power. And not that much less money though, but we'll go for it. We'll get another S1 KPEV and we'll also grab these top tier stuff. We actually might have some of these in storage. Let's just check. So we've got one of those in storage. Okay, we'll use that. Might as well. But it's going to take more than that, I think. So one, two, I think, yeah, let's go for, th let's go for three. I think that's fair. Three of each. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, we don't really need gondolas because we're not sending any raw stuff over there. Just cut goods at this time. And the same for fuel, we're not really sending any of that, so that's okay. So in that case, it's just going to be the gondolas and boxcars. You know, in that case, I'm going to get another extra couple of these. Just might as well, you know. Chuck it on to this new route. Distribution to North Yard. And out comes this new technology. This is a new era for gameplay in Transport Fever 2. Distribution is so meta. And I cannot wait until every single resource is being used. When we have tanks, planes, and the whole lot at war. And speaking of war... Something tragic may have just happened. As we expanded it over into Paris, I got some of my intelligence operatives tell me a little something, and it wasn't good. Uh, yeah, 
it looks like Leon is planning a revenge plot against us to take back Paris. And that'll mean all of our work that we did in this episode will be for nothing. So we got to defend this point. And that's why you need to watch this video where I'm going to use all of the different things we built today to take back this battle. 